going to be my plus one. And we were really excited about all of it. And then a couple days before, maybe, yeah, like two days before, he called and then texted saying that he all of a sudden couldn't come. So he was going to, so you were going to the wedding together. And I know you were talking before about that was um, something you really wanted to do and you were really excited about that. And um, you were really hoping it was going to be then that you were going to be there together. Yeah. And then he, um, and then he dropped out and then he just told you that he wasn't going to go. And that, 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 that um, you know, that really um, reminds me of a lot of the things you were saying about what's difficult in the relationship. Yeah. And it's kind of like just his flakiness. And... I mean, you were saying that, yeah, wow, he's really, that is really flaky. That must have felt really awful for you. I mean, just that, that real kind of, you know, expectation and the hope and then the flakiness, that was really difficult. Yeah. I mean, he's done things like, you know, like the ghosting before. Yeah. the ghost. I know you said about the ghost thing that, I mean, he was, yeah, that was really awful, wasn't it? When he was ghosting you and you didn't hear from him for ages. Yeah. I don't know. But this, like the wedding just seemed. Yeah, it was the wedding was like, wow. Wow. I mean, yeah. How did it feel? Um, Lonely. You're lonely. I, yeah. Really lonely. I, really I got to go to the wedding on my own. So. Go, you got to go to the wedding on your own. It was, yeah. I had to go to the wedding on my own and so so what sort of um what sort of wedding was it how many people were there um i mean it was like pretty small and intimate like i don't know 75 maybe 75, wow. um, quite expensive aren't they yeah i, yeah. I don't know <laughs> yeah, 75 and what was it good like the catering was the food good um yeah carla's dad is a chef so <laughs> he was able to like I don't know if it was him or his company that cooked the food. Um, but like I was sitting at a table with my friends, right. and all, all of our mutual friends, and they all brought plus ones and right. Josh was and, there. And, and so what was on the menu? I, I, sorry, I mean, I just, my, my, my son's getting married. In, oh. <laughs> so um, well, I'm vegetarian. So oh. Oh. some people had fish um oh, my son's vegetarian oh okay um i had pasta right um, good pasta. yeah yeah i've been thinking about that he quickly apologized and stuff afterwards like a couple days later um but i just don't know if like I should tell him. I think I mean I think you should tell him really. I mean, you know, you're upset by this and you're hurt by that. I think probably the best is if you I don't know what would you text? Would you ring him up? I'd give him a ring and just say that it's just really not on. Yeah, but like we don't. I don't know. We don't really talk about things like that. Like he apologized. Yeah, he's apologized, but I mean, you know, like you were saying, it's not good enough. And I think that um, you know, if you you got to, I mean. Uh, what we've been talking about is you got to stand up more for yourself, Martha. And I think, you know, you need to tell him, you need to say to him, you know, this isn't good enough. Yeah. But I don't know, like, hopefully he understands that we we like, he laughed about it. We laughed. I mean, we laughed about it. He's funny. Um, and things like this have happened before. I don't know. I don't want to like lose him by making well, it. I don't think you lose him. I, I'm sure it'll work out. I don't know that. Well, you know these things normally work out you know if you were honest with people and you tell them up front and you should be okay and like we had been looking forward to this for a really long time and oh don't like... get upset i'm sure it's okay gone gone oh <laughs> no. don't cry he was he was supposed to come with me and like be my plus one and just a couple of days before he texted me and he was like I can't come to the wedding and then turned off his phone and so 
Oh, don't don't get upset. It's it's all right. It's okay. Oh, it's not it's not nothing to cry. Have you got some tissues there? Oh, it's nothing. Don't worry. It'll be it'll be all right. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure he'll. he'll did he? He got back in touch with you, didn't he? Yeah, but like after yeah. the wedding. Well, he, he, maybe it took him a little bit of time, but he did get. I'm sure it'd be fine. I don't know. I had to go to the wedding alone, and. Oh, I, I, you know, I, Martha, I hate to see you cry about this. It's not, oh, he's not worth it. Don't get upset. It just really sucked being there alone, like when we were talking about going together. Yeah, don't cry. I mean, you know that he's like ghosted me before and is flaky. Yeah, that was awful. Yeah, but this time, like I was supposed to go to my best friend's wedding last yeah. weekend. Yeah. And he just texted me a couple days before, didn't yeah. even call or anything. And I was like, I can't come. Yeah. And no other explanation other than that. Yeah. Oh, that's um, awful. I know. And then I couldn't even, like, I tried calling him, things yeah. like that. He didn't answer. So he obviously, didn't answer. Like, no. And obviously I'm worried about him, but also like we knew we were going to this wedding. He knew how important it is. It was Carla, like on, my yeah. best friend. Yeah. I'm in the party yeah. and he just messages saying he hey, can't come. That's terrible. What was he thinking? I don't know, but. It's, it's you, it's you, I mean, you were saying before he's a bit flaky. He's really flaky. He's always flaky. And I don't know if that's something that like, I don't know, I can talk about with him or something, but. Is he going to listen? Probably not. No, I don't think he will. I mean, he just seems to do that all the time to you. Yeah, I mean, it's been a while, but I don't know. But then he apologizes. Yeah. Well, he and does, he... doesn't he? That's yeah. his way. But I mean, then he does it again. I know. So like, I don't know. Aren't you supposed to apologize and then not do it again? Exactly. Exactly. And I had to go to the wedding, like be with all my friends without Josh. And so, so sorry. So why, why is that so bad being there on your own? Well, like I I wanted to share that with Josh. He knows Carla. All of my friends know that I'm, that we're dating. And like, they all had plus ones. And all of a sudden, like, obviously it was so close to the wedding that there's this empty chair next to me at the table. So, so you were worried about what they'd think about you, like, because they've all got plus ones, you have to have a plus one as well. Yeah, but also, like, you can't just drop going to a wedding, like, something that we've been looking forward to for so long. And he knows how important it is to me to, like, all of a sudden, not even with an explanation or anything, not checking in, not being like, I'm so sorry, you know, I know how much this means to you, but something critical came up. It was just like, can't come. But isn't, isn't this about you being independent and being able to do things, these things on your own? I mean, not, yeah. not, not relying on him. Yeah, I mean, I am independent. Like, I went on my own. I yeah. drove. I good. stayed at a hotel on my own. Like, I, of course, I still went. I'm not going to not go. But it just sucked to not be there with him. Like, I, yeah. not that I was dependent on him, but... It just like, sounds like you were, I mean, it just sounds like you were really worried about what your friends would think about you rather than you, and you know. It's not important what your friends think about you. Well, it is important what my friends think about me. I mean, they know that I don't think it changed their view on me, but it's like, where's Josh? I think there's something about, there's something about being a grown-up, which is about not worrying what other people think about you. just felt like like I don't know I, so you went to this wedding how how did you get to the wedding did you did you drive did you well I had to drive you drove right okay and you just went on your own yeah I had to go and like obviously they didn't have time to like redo tables or anything 
So I was just like sitting with all my friends, all their plus ones. Hmm. Who and was, there, like, was it the friends that you talked about in the last session that you were there with? Yeah, like all my uni friends. Oh, right. And you were saying that you were quite close to them. Yeah. And was that okay? Um, I mean, like, I love them and like, it was fun to be with them, but I don't know, like Josh was supposed to be there. Did you text him afterwards about it and uh, kind of let him know what was going on, how you felt? Um, yeah, I think a couple of days later, like, I mean, I was giving him space, but he messaged and like, I don't know, we talked about it, but I just don't think he like understood that. Like that was really, really awful. What did he say in his message? Um, just like, sorry, I couldn't be there. I hope it was nice. And after he was upset about like work things and things like that, when I was also upset and it just felt like I always have to take care of him before taking care of myself. So you're always looking after him. Yeah. Yeah. That's really interesting, isn't it? Because I know you were saying in the session before about how um, you, you always had to look after your brother. And it really reminds me of kind of psychodynamic theory where, you know, the relationships that we have in the past then get projected onto the ones in the present. There's, loads of object relations stuff in there are kind of thinking around Klein as well. I don't know, there's also this kind of interpersonal circumplex about taking dominant positions over somebody taking submissive positions. I don't know, there's kind of a touch of, there's something Jungian going on. Don't you think there's something a little bit Jungian in there about just like the kind of those archetypal roles about like the kind of the, the, the mother archetype. I can really feel that in there. It kind of, yeah, really interesting. He texted, not even called, but like he texted saying, I can't come to the wedding and then turned his phone off. Like I wasn't able to message him or anything. And so I had to go along. Um, everything okay? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, carry on. Um, okay. Um, sorry, just your phone. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, sorry. I, I mean, it, it's fine. Uh, you know, these things happen. This is your time. Um, yeah, it's just happened before. So I just didn't know if that's normal. Yeah, of course it's normal. Totally normal. Um, um, go on, carry on. Sorry, I don't know where I am. Look, I mean, you know, sometimes phones go off. It's not a, it's not a big issue. This is your time. It's a space for you to talk about things. And, um, and you know, don't don't be distracted by that. Yeah, I, I, it's distracting, I guess. I, I'm i just not used to being with a counselor. No. Everybody has phones these days. It's not a big deal. Yeah, but like I turned mine on, do not disturb. <laughs> well, I tried to turn mine off. I thought I'd turned it off. Okay. Um, where anyway, was carry I? on. You, you, were talking about the, you were talking about the wedding. Um, yeah, anyway, he canceled. So I didn't, I didn't know what to do. And a couple of days before he said that he couldn't come. So, I mean, obviously that was like disappointing and stuff. And I had to go home, just straight me out thinking like, what's going on between us. And I just feel like I can't relax, even though he apologized and like, we're past that. It's just like with work, with him, everything is just always you're really, stressful. You're really stressed and anxious. Yeah, all yeah. the time. Yeah, wow. So listen, I was doing, I was at this weekend, I was at a workshop and we were about hypnosis. And uh, I think there's a really useful exercise that I'd like to try on you if that's okay. 
it's uh it's just taking you through uh, a visualization that we did and then there's some other parts of it that I'll, I'll i'll see if i can kind of remember is that right And obviously, like, brought up feeling just alone. Um, yeah, and you mentioned that kind of, you know, briefly in our first session about that emotional kind of like real neglect that you had, that your parents were just away a lot of the time, and that was really painful and traumatic for you. So let me just take you back to that kind of those childhood experiences of trauma. Can you tell me how that felt as a child? Um, I guess I'd prefer to, like, talk about this with Josh like feeling neglected with him yeah um, but i think you know this is a space that you can talk about some of those really traumatic things and you know it might be good to kind of get them out there yeah i know but i feel like we talked about it last time um and so yeah. like, we kind of we, we kind of mentioned it but we didn't really go into the feelings so maybe if we could just kind of think about what some of the feelings were like back there um you know, like when you were a child, like what was it like being alone and your parents were out for, you know, sometimes days at a time? How did you feel? Um, I guess with Josh, like it's it's like this feeling of I know he's there, but not like I know. Sounds uh, like you're really resisting talking about those experiences. I, I think I think it'd be good to go in them, you know. Yeah, I just feel like it's more relevant with Josh right now. A little hard with Josh right now. Mm -hmm. um, like we were supposed to go to my best friend's wedding last mm -hmm. weekend. And I'm in the party and mm -hmm. he was going to be my plus one. Mm -hmm. um, and then just like the day before he texted saying I can't come to the wedding. Wow. Um and turned off his phone so I wasn't wow. able to reach him or anything. Wow. And so I had to go alone. Um yeah. and like well, it was fine. I had fun, but it was just really weird and obviously I was worried about him. Yeah. Um, but he's flaky, like he's done things yeah. like this before. Yeah. Um, wow. So it was just annoying. And then yeah. we talked about it later and he was apologetic and stuff, but I just don't know. I want someone I can depend on. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I really feel that here. Yeah. I really, really feel that Martha. I, I really know what you mean. Like, we'll make plans or something, and then, like, an hour before, he'll cancel. Um, so he's really flaky and not dependable? Not at all. God, that must be really awful. Yeah, it just feels like I can't, like, trust him or rely on him. I just, if it's okay, if I could just share something with you. Because um, I did have a relationship. I, I kind of really know what you feel. I had a relationship. A couple of years ago with somebody who was just, uh, you know, I was really in love with her, but um, it was kind of, it was very similar, really. She was really uh, just, I could never depend on her. Sometimes she'd be there and sometimes she'd this, but it's really painful, isn't it? It's really difficult. Yeah, I just feel like I can't like. I was so, I was just, God, I was just, you know, I just felt it was like being on a roller coaster, you know, I was just, um, it's really actually it's really painful just thinking about it um God. i mean it ended in the it, it you know in the end it ended and um you know i just she just disappeared i, don't, I still don't think i've got that